Hey, what's up everybody? Happy Monday to you all. Uh, today I wanted to put out a video uh, to clarify some of the things that I shared last week. So if you didn't see last week, I put out uh, a video um, sharing five things that Infusionsoft has done or that Keep has done inside of Infusionsoft that you may have missed. Uh, one of those key things uh, was checkout pages, a new way to create essentially order forms. Um, they're mobile responsive, drag and drop, really easy to create order forms. They call them checkout pages inside of Infusionsoft. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you um, some of the great things about checkout pages, but also some of the current limitations, and also give you a way to provide some feedback to Infusionsoft or to Keep um, about checkout pages. So the good news is that Keep has assigned a new product manager to uh, the landing page tool and to checkout pages, which are built on the same platform. When you get into either one of those, you'll realize that... Um, the uh, drag and drop interface is the same. So it's the same uh, builder, the same platform, and uh, the actual you know action that the user takes is the only part that's slightly different, right? You fill out a form if it's a landing page, or you check out using a credit card if it's a checkout page. Uh, but otherwise, it's basically the same thing. So although this is a great step, for all of us who want to use mobile responsive uh, checkout pages, want to make it easy, drag and drop, things like that. Uh, this is kind of a version one of checkout pages, uh, and it's great for simple usage, but there are a few key things uh, that are missing, and if you need these things, you need to be aware that these things are missing, and um, and then you know maybe you'll continue using the the solution that you have right now, and then eventually uh, maybe you'll you'll switch over to checkout pages. So, uh, like I said, the good news is uh, Keep has assigned a new product manager, uh, taking information in right now from uh, the Keep and Infusionsoft community about checkout pages and about the landing page builder, uh, so that they can make improvements. So, uh, on this post, uh, on this uh, blog post on our website, uh, if you'll take a minute and provide your feedback, I'll make sure all that feedback gets to that product manager and that way uh, we can get the the best outcome for checkout pages and the landing page builder so with checkout pages what are the limitations well first and foremost there's two things that to me are always critical you probably heard me talk about these things before but affiliate tracking uh, does not currently work with checkout pages and also lead source tracking those are two things to, that do not currently work with checkout pages uh, which I would really really prefer are uh, are included there so if you have um, an e-commerce situation where you have affiliates promoting for you you'll want to stick with standard order forms and I'm going to give you some op options there that you'll want to consider um, or you'll want to find another another solution also if you really absolutely need to capture the lead source when someone checks out then you'll want to look at other options as well now just so you know standard order forms in infusionsoft for years have not captured lead source either that's always been a limitation so that's not a, a new limitation and the, one of the ways that we've always gotten around that in the past is by having someone do a step one web form first so they fill out a step one web form might have name and email just to capture the lead source into the web form and then we take them to an order form so that's an, always an option and you can continue to use that option with checkout pages problem is checkout pages also have kind of an information capture stage and then go to the checkout page um, and so it might be a little redundant it's too many steps it's going to create some friction in uh, in the checkout process um, some other things that uh, are not available currently in checkout pages is there's no promo code field so you can't run promotions where people have a, a promo code and really there's no promotion uh, opportunity at all so the promotions function inside of Infusionsoft won't work if you go in and create promotions based on date range or quantities or you know product specific discounts things like that those won't currently work again those are things that I would prefer are in checkout pages before we all start using them but if you just need a simple checkout process uh, checkout pages is a great option if you need um, if you need some of those other features what we generally recommend is to use uh, Infusionsoft standard order forms and if you want those order forms to be mobile responsive and to capture affiliate tracking and all that kind of stuff then again we, we recommend standard order forms but you might want to check out spiffy spiffy is a great option for making that uh, your standard order forms 
mobile responsive, give them some additional features that really uh, create a great user experience for your users. So I'll put a link in the blog post to Spiffy. Uh, if you need um, some of the other options that you might con be considering in your checkout process, like one-click upsells and things like that, Spiffy's a great option as well. If you want to use standard order forms without Spiffy and then do one-click upsells, you've got options like Plus This, Fix Your Funnel, etc. Uh, plenty of options out there, which I'll, I'll link to in the blog post as well. So now that that's kind of out of the way, I wanted to also kind of show just a little demo of uh, checkout pages, uh, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, we didn't get into this in my previous video. Some people had asked for it, so let's check it out. If you're not interested in the demo, then you can go ahead and, and sign off on the video at this point. But uh, if you wanna look at, at the demo, then let's dive in here. So now we're in Infusionsoft. Uh, from the main menu, you're gonna go to e-commerce setup. You'll end up on this page, and here you'll have checkout pages. Click on checkout pages, and it'll go into the builder experience. If you have created some checkout pages already, they'll be listed here on the left-hand side under your pages. If you want to start with one of the templates, then of course you'll just uh, preview the templates here, check out which one might be a good starting point for you. Um, and then uh, once you have these, um, your, your template created and branded the way you want, uh, you can of course save it to your pages and you can start with one of those as an option by going to your pages and uh, starting with your, your option there uh, and editing those, okay? So let's just um, go back to our templates here. Let's grab this one. We'll hit preview. You can see the preview here. And uh, once I check it all out and I decide this one's for me, then I'll hit use this template. And it'll take me to the editor. So if you have used the landing page, better, uh, landing page builder, you'll recognize all of this. So I'll call this test checkout page. All right, and of course I can change my, my fonts and my branding and logo and all that kind of stuff right here before I get into the actual builder. Here we are in the builder, and again I can, I can still do some of that editing here. So I can come in and change the, uh, the image uh, for the, the logo, I can change all the text, all this kind of stuff. And what you need to do to make all of this become a checkout page is you need to click on the calls to action. Sometimes it's a form, like a step one form, and sometimes it's just a button depending on the template that you uh, start with or the page that you build. Okay, so uh, what you need to do here is you need to change the action. So the action on this button, what do I want it to do? I could have it go to another section in the page, and maybe that section is a step one form. I can go to another page in the funnel, so I can have multiple pages in the funnel, or I can link it straight to checkout. Now in this case, this is a simple process where we're bringing people to a page, they click on the button, they go straight to checkout. Let's do that one here. So we can go straight to checkout. Now I need to uh, define what products are being purchased here. Okay, so I can manage my products here. I can create a new product. I can delete existing products, et cetera. Or I can just select a product. So I'm gonna be selling my awesome widget here. Here we go, awesome widget. And there we go, there's the price and everything is good to go. You can also add additional products. So maybe I wanna add a coaching subscription to this then I can add that on the fly and make a bundle. And when you make a bundle, uh, those bundles are not separatable. Is that even a word? Separable? <laughs> um, so you can't, uh, the person who's checking out won't be able to say, yeah, you know what, ditch the subscription and just have the widget. Uh, when you create them like this, they will be, uh, it's required that they're purchased together, okay? All right, so I've done that on this button. There's also another call to action on this page down here, and I need to do the same thing here, okay? And so, um, again, you've got properties. What do I want it to do? I want it to link to checkout. And then I need to manage my products here and I'll make it be the same products. I wanna get my awesome widget and my coaching subscription, both in there. And of course you can then edit and design and change all the content, things like that. Let's Before we get into that, and I'm gonna show you some things that you should understand about checkout pages and about landing pages for easy design. If you don't understand these things, then the drag and drop nature of the uh, landing page builder or the checkout page builder uh, might be a little bit tricky for you, but I'm gonna show you a couple of little uh, easy things that once you understand them, then it allows for much easier editing of these pages, okay? So next step, 
and here we're done, right? So now you can add uh, tracking uh, to these pages, tracking scripts, things like that, uh, Facebook sharing, custom domains, all the same features that you had in, um, in the landing page builder if you're familiar with that. Now that I have that page published, we're going to just paste it into a browser and check out the experience. So we see everything that we saw before and now when we click on one of these buttons, you'll see that it takes us to the checkout page, okay? So now we just have email address, name on card, credit card number, et cetera, pay now. So it's very simple, easy checkout process. Now one thing to understand, and this, again, this is another limitation of the checkout pages, is that this page isn't very editable, right? It's gonna bring on some of the features of the previous page, the logo, the fonts, the colors, things like that, but you can't come in and edit this page specifically. Like you couldn't put a um, you know money back guarantee offer right here or, or things like that, um, which again, those would be some nice features to add, but uh, currently that's not available, okay? So that's the basic process for using checkout pages. It's pretty straightforward, very easy, but let's go back to the, um, the page itself. Let's go to the design, design function here. And let me just show you a couple of things here, right? So when you're editing in the landing page builder or the checkout page builder, uh, it's important to understand how all of this works. You have elements over here, which you can drag and drop into your uh, page here, which is really nice, makes it really easy. So if I wanna drop a video here, I could put it right here and you can see where it highlights. So that video is gonna stretch the entire page. Or maybe I just want it in this column right under the button, I can drop it there. So now there's my video and you can see how all that lines up. Now sometimes when you're looking at all this and you maybe switch from the desktop view to the mobile view, maybe sometimes things don't line up exactly the way you want. Now I haven't edited this template much and the templates tend to be pretty good straight out of the box, um, but maybe I did some editing that, that caused some things to get a little wonky in one of these views and I don't really like it. Well, I need to come in and start rearranging the way things are lined up. And that's where you come into um, the sections and the layout. Let's look at layout. Now currently, the sections by default aren't labeled, but it's a good idea to label them, particularly if you're gonna be using uh, this template or you're gonna create a template for yourself that you're gonna use over and over. So this section, which is, um, when you when you hover over the section, you're gonna see the section on the page bounce, right? So when I hover over section one, you'll see that section at the top with the logo and the need help section, that whole section will bounce. Okay, so I can come in here and hit the edit settings. And then over on the right, I can say this is the header. All right, and then I can come over back to manage layout and you can see that that one's now labeled header, right? And now this one I might call the hero shot or something like that, right? So. I'll just come in here and go dumbbells slash hero, you know, whatever you wanna call it so that it makes sense for you, right? Section three is the free shipping, right? You see that bounce, that little orange section there, red, whatever it is. I'm slightly colorblind, so I don't know what it is, but we'll call this the free shipping. Okay, so you can see how now that those are labeled, it's easy to find them. Now, when you click into each one, you'll notice that they have details within them. So in the dumbbell shot, there's row one, which is actually the entire thing. And if I click into that, you'll see that there's columns. So column one has the dumbbells in it. Column two has the product name, that blurb, the button, and the video all within there. And if I click in that, then I get into those details. And each one of these can be labeled, right? So I can hit edit settings and label each one. But also what's important is to understand that I can come in and define how each of one of these operates, particularly with the spacing. And this is where it gets important when uh, you're trying to get it all to look right with mobile, view versus desktop view and things like that. So you can come in and say, hey, right now it has an extra small margin. I can go a little bit bigger margin, large margin, extra large margin. So see how it's moving it down, down, down because it's putting a margin along there or I can remove the margin completely. I can add padding down here, same type of thing, extra small, medium, large, extra large padding. Right, And so each of these types of features are gonna be helpful when you're trying to design everything. But knowing how everything is laid out 
is the important part, right? And so, I, and I need to recognize where I'm at when I'm navigating through this thing. So right now, when I hover e over each one, I see them bounce and I know where I am. Okay, I'm within that column. If I go back, now I've got column one. I can define some features about column one. I can resize it. I can define, hey, on mobile, how big is this thing? Well, on mobile, maybe I want it to be a little bit smaller. So I can come in here and see how that changes when it's in mobile view, right? So that that changes things a bit. I can look at borders, uh, the border width, background images, background colors, all those types of things in the column view. If I wanna get out of that, I can go back, back to manage layout. Again, I've got column one, column two. Those will end up stacking often in mobile view. So recognize that that's the case. And I got the, the uh, dumbbells up here on top and column two down below. Maybe I want that to look a little different and I want um, you know the, the column two information to be on top. I can make that go up, right? Now my information is above the dumbbells, right? Pretty straightforward. Go back to the row, go back to desktop view, see how the row looks now. See, now I've got a little bit of an alignment issue on the left, I need to go fix that. So you'll see how you know messing around with stuff might make it a little bit funky, but then by editing and knowing how all this works, I can go in and change the spacing and the padding on these things so that it all looks right. So that's the basic you know, understanding that's important um, for landing page builder and checkout page builder. With the checkout page builder, you have this additional option here for managing pages. So you can create multiple pages. So here we have our, our index page, which is what we're on now. We can go to uh, editing the thank you page. See how it says switching pages here? Uh, so I can go to my thank you page and I can edit there. I can create a blank page. So if I want multiple steps in the funnel, I can create that here. So you can see how this is heading the direction of being able to replace a lot of different third-party tools. But again, just to be clear, uh, if you need affiliate tracking, lead source tracking, if you need to alter the, um, the actual checkout page itself, uh, you may want to look at other options for now. Again, look at the post uh, where I've put this information on our blog so you can link to Spiffy or some of the options, uh, other options that you might want to look at. So anyways, hopefully that clarifies some things for you about the new checkout pages and what you can do with it. And uh, it, in my opinion, is a great start. And if you just need a simple checkout process uh, that's mobile responsive, easy to use, easy to create, uh, it's a great start. But again, if you need some of those advanced features, you're going to want to look at some other options. So uh, again, take a moment and uh, give some feedback on this post. Uh, comment here uh, and give some feedback to the Keep product team who is over checkout pages and landing pages. Again, they're dedicating resources to this. They have a new product manager over checkout pages and uh, landing pages. Um, and so Put your comments here, put your feedback here, and I'll make sure all of that feedback gets to the product team uh, so that we can make sure that these products get developed uh, in the way that we need them. And uh, that'll be great. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.